Hi, I'm Liron Cohen. And I'm Mimi Torchin. And you're listening to Lady Parts TV, the podcast. Whee! Hello. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Leroy. How are you? I'm sleepy. Me too. Oh, it must be this cloudy, heavy day. Yeah. And, you know, things in the country are not as exhilarating as I would want oh, them no. to be. I thought I could just <laughs> stick my head under a pillow and stay there. <laughs> okay. In another country. <laughs> On a better note, we tallied 19 primetime shows, out of which 14... Were written by a woman, that's Fantastic. 74%. That's amazing. Written, t- uh, directed 10, which is 53%. Excellent. Also, nothing to sneeze at. Very, very happy with the stats. And before we tell you about uh, quite a few interesting things you want to watch, I'm going to tell you that the nominations for the fourth Lady Parts TV Awards are coming out. The ballot will be waiting for you any day now. Keep, uh, keep your eyes out. Um, I'm going to post the ballot. You're going to be voting. Uh, for, Please vote. Because, you know, don't complain. Because then, you you know, right, there's nothing to fetch about it. <laughs> vote. Exactly. There are so many, so many exciting nominees and so many we had to leave out. Actually, because too many room. exciting nominees. It was a very good year for women in television. Yes, it's going to be very hard to choose just one in each category. But you all will do it because you're good like that. And uh, you're going to send us your ballots. And then we're going to have our, our fourth uh, broadcast, which is very exciting. Yes. It's one of my favorite things of the year year um okay so we're gonna start Mimi you're gonna tell us about a new documentary that we just watched yesterday because we figured you know what could be what could be more fitting for this year's fourth of July exactly. than this story this and is no, we could have equally watched the Janes which we haven't yes exactly <laughs> um, Here, this is a, um, a documentary about someone who very quickly became a hero of mine it's called uh, Gabby Giffords won't back down and it uh, opens nationwide in theaters, but I'm sure because CNN is a co-producer uh, that it will also appear at some point. At some point, anyway, July fifteenth, um, uh, directed by Julie Cohen and Betsy West. And by the way, almost everybody behind the scenes, including the are women, the cinematographer, the cinematographer the which music. always excites me. Yes, yes. everybody was um, women. Uh, I'm going to read what. Uh, yeah, we, we normally don't do that, no, but, but this was so beautifully written. It that was we perfectly. It it described it. Perfectly, um, it described it perfectly. Yes. So it says the extraordinary story of former Arizona Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, her relentless fight to recover following an assassination attempt in 2011, and her new life as one of the most effective activists in the battle for gun violence prevention and in promoting understanding of the language condition aphasia. Featuring extensive verite filming of Gabby and her husband, astronaut-turned-Senator Mark Kelly, interviews with President Barack Obama and other friends and colleagues, and exclusive access to stunning videos taken the weeks following her near-death experience. This film is the story of a rising star transformed by an act of violence and a close-up portrait of the marriage that sustained her. This and was from the press release, and it was just so perfect that we just decided. Yes, it just, to it really described read. the film. Um, uh, Gabby, uh, it showed first of all the charisma. Her absolutely, they uh, they they talked about the the effect she had on people as being gabified, <laughs> and um, I was gabified. We were both gabified. I, I was gabified. I mean, we've been gabified in, for a long time in, uh, since I first became aware of her when she was uh, a congressperson, and um, I have I loved her. I loved her. Go get you, you know her really. Um, her strength, her personality. She has a huge personality, which she still has. Um, her warmth. Her warmth, her charm. Uh, I, I learned so many things I didn't know about her in this uh, film, um, as well as the behind-the-scenes stories of things I did know about her. Uh, Mark Kelly uh, decided to record everything about her uh, from the day she was shot to th- through her recovery, her um, therapy, her early days in the hospital, 
uh, it's, her rehab. Her rehab. It's extremely, extremely um, moving and terrifying. It was kind of equal parts inspiring and heartbreaking. Heart, exactly, and um, it's just it's so awe inspiring because she worked so hard and still does, and still does, and she she they said she was like a one percent. Um, recovery recovery chances. chances, and she did it. She's one of the very few who managed to come back from this kind of a traumatic brain injury, which destroyed her her language language center, center and uh, her uh, right side. Right side. Right um, she's just her spirit is just unbelievable. She is such a fighter. She's so determined, and she has such such such, such a joy warmth and charm in all of and it. She, Joy, amazing joy. You see her frustrations. Yes, you, you see, see her breakdowns. I mean, you would you'd be crazy not to have them. Um, but but she also has such a uh, positive outlook on life and on people that it's just it's contagious. It is. Uh, also uh, showed a little bit about the people who were killed. Uh, and about the day of her generally about gun violence, attempt, gun, gun legislation, course, or lack thereof. A lack thereof, and the heartbreak of it. But she is. Uh, and I didn't she, even know how how active, active she is she, now. No. In, she, in gun, she's um, doing. She goes from from town to town, talking about um, well, you and, know, being a living symbol of what gun violence. But also can the do. the organization that she formed actually does things behind the scenes for policies and legislation mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Um, and they've been hugely um, meaningful. I didn't know about all of that stuff. And she turned her husband into a senator. Well, she turned it. He, he became her voice. He really, um, he was, you know, he was a, a, a very, very uh, renowned astronaut. He had no political ambitions. The love that they oh my share. God. The dedication, the devotion. It's just so beautiful The to humor watch. that... Uh, the, permeates everything and uh and the fact that he basically is now fulfilling the career that she should have had right. being her voice and uh it's 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 a beautiful movie from beginning to end and it was done brilliantly um incorporating uh all these all this footage from her you know the the indie footage let's call it the cinema verite uh including interviews with her and going but it's just it's it and her progress beautiful. is remarkable, but you see how hard she has to work for yeah. every word Again, still, that comes out of her still. mouth. Still, yeah. and um, it's just watch it. Just just watch you it. You will be so. First of all, you'll be horrified to begin with, but then you will just be so uplifted and so in awe, so gabified. Yes, absolutely. So Gabby Giffords, called, we love you. We admire you. We worship you. And what you've done and what you're doing. And what you will continue to do. Yes. Gabby Giffords won't back down. Available in theaters as of July 15th, but keep an eye out. It will definitely, we think, will end up uh, closer by. Well, everything does, and especially yeah. if it's uh, if CNN, CNN was one of its co-producers. Yeah. So anyway, you will love it. Okay, now to a show that I've, I'm sure you've all heard about because I've heard about it, but um, maybe you're like me and uh, heard about it but thought, oh, it's about teenagers, I won't care. Thank you, Robert Shirk, for really pushing us yes. uh, towards this strongly. A yes, nice, we decided to just start... A shove. Giving it a, giving it a try, and we were enamored. And uh, Olivia Coleman was in it. I mean, in very a tiny, briefly, tiny, but tiny role. just knowing she was in it right, gave that us was, a that more... That was a good incentive. Right, uh, incentive. <laughs> so Heartstopper is available on Netflix now. The season, the first season, I think, is eight episodes or ten. Um, anyway, they've already been renewed for two more seasons. I think right after a, their right, first episode or something. Yes, right out the gate, uh, created by Alice Oseman and based on her novel. It's starring a lot of British children, British <laughs> teenagers that I didn't know, but I will tell you who the, besides Olivia Coleman, who the two um, main characters are, uh, played by Joe Locke and Kit Connor, two charming, charming adorable, beautiful, um, lovely boys. I just adored them. I just loved them with all my heart. And they fall in love. And uh, that's all I'm going to tell you, because the rest you have to watch to experience why it's so... Uh, yes, even their friendship was sort of improbable, so to, <laughs> to find, for it to turn into a romance... 
Yes, and there's so, and there's a, there's a couple of lesbians and there's a trans uh, girl yeah, there's too. There's always the friends in the orbit. Yeah, but they and, were also uh, they were also important. significant. Yes, um, and it's coming of age and it's a, a teen, you know, high school uh, thing. Which that's the to hell me, of high school. Yeah, and that to me was not one of the main attractions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of watched it despite it, but uh, it was just so. Heart cap, heart stopping. No, no, uh, it was heartwarming. heartwarming. Uh, it was beautiful and sweet. And we devoured it. We did because it was just. Yeah, it it was made you feel good. All warm and fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I loved it. I loved the messages that they that they were that they had in it. I, I loved that there was only kindness. Really, this even though there were even there was mean spiritedness yes. because it's teenagers and you know you know how that works. Uh, but ultimately. I felt that after the first episode, I could trust them that they mm-hmm. were not gonna they were not gonna not toy gonna with break me. our hearts. Yes, they were not gonna toy with me. They were gonna give me a, a satisfying story. So, Heartstopper, we highly recommend it. Um, again, the the leads are two boys. I don't care. It was wonderful. Uh, check it out on Netflix. And now we have a new series. Um, Three feature film length episodes. Yeah, which Acre I don't know if TV. they were originally like six episodes and they just bunched them up into three that are an hour and a half each. But that's how they deli- that's I like how, it that way. That's how we got it served the uh, the episode. Exactly. It's called Signora Volpe. Volpe. Oh, yes. You wrote Volpe. I, and I told I you. I know it's Volpe. <laughs> right. I know it's Volpe because Volpe means fox well, uh-huh. in Italian. And uh, the main character's name is... Uh, Sylvia, Sylvia Fox. Fox, and the, and the actress's actress. name is Amelia Fox, who many so, of you will know. I like her so much. Foxes, foxes all yes, around. Yes, uh, among other people uh, in the cast are Tara Fitzgerald. Uh, many of you will know her from quite a few things, but especially Game from Game of Thrones, oh. yes. And Jamie Bammer from uh, many things, Maybe. but especially Battlestar Galactica. And did we mention that it was on Acorn TV? I did mention okay. that right Acorn out of TV. the gate. All, Acorn all three TV. of them are, yes. are available. One of our favorite streaming services. Yes. And um, uh, again, should we just read no. it? No, no, oh, just okay. tell us what it's so, about. So uh, um, Sylvia Fox is a high-ranking uh, British uh, MI6 spy agent. in MI6. Uh, and um, for a number of reasons, she, it loses its luster for her. She becomes dissatisfied. There's a change in uh, management, <laughs> and uh, she's just not happy with it. And so she decides to take some of the leave, which she probably hasn't uh, done in you know 20 years mm-hmm. or 15 years. And uh, she goes to visit her uh, sister and sister niece. And niece. Uh, she's sort of estranged from her sister. She and her niece are quite close. Her niece had come to... London to go to school. Anyway, they she goes and to she Italy. wants to reconnect to Italy. And uh it's just beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's shot on location. Shot so on location. It's, it's, it's a in feast Umbria. For the you can yeah. just faint. It's so beautiful. And um as, as it tends to happen with spies, she just keeps following them around, yes, even to Italy. <laughs> well, anyway, her niece is getting married and the bridegroom doesn't show up. And right, disappears. So that's, that's, that's the first the main, mystery. That's, that's the, the first mystery. Of the first that's the episode. one we watched. Of the and, first episode. But don't worry, there'll be more mysteries oh, coming yes, up. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and she, of course, because A, it's her niece, and B... She's MI6. She's MI6. She, she has to be involved, um, and she becomes deeply involved. Uh, she starts to work very closely with... Uh, are they called car- carbineros? With know. the... Local police. The local police captain. Such as it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and he's surprisingly honest. Um, anyway, and by the end of that episode, just, she finds a house. She finds, finds an old, really crumbling down, but gorgeous little to house and decides around. to stick around. <laughs> and and more mysteries will follow will her Will follow, there. exactly. <laughs> so it's called, it, we enjoyed it very much. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of starts off. You, a you're thinking, slow. no, actually, it starts off with the MI6 things. You think, oh, it's going to oh, be right. high it's octane. End up Middle then, Eastern, and then uh, it completely. No. Oh, she's going to Italy. <laughs> She'll meet up with some Middle Eastern type. No, then it no. just kind of goes into like its this own thing. Laissez faire, uh, and then it, and then it gets yes, all, yes, all yes. high octane exactly. again. Exactly, but it's it's uh, an interesting. It's, it's beautiful interesting to look at, and uh, everybody is good. And uh, it's, it's an interesting mystery. Mm-hmm. So uh, I one of them recommend things. it. Uh, love love this kind of show, Amelia Fox. Um, 
Oh, did I say it was created by Rachel Kupperman and Sally Griffith? No, another, but now you did. another two yeah. women um, uh, at the top. Yeah. Um, it's called Senora Volpe. It's on um, Acorn TV right now. Check it out. Um, so here's a new movie called The Forgiven. It's in theaters now. Uh, my wife and I were very divided on this. Very Ron divided. Played on her phone through the whole thing, and uh, I. This was, is the sort of thing that I thought we should have watched this in the middle of the afternoon, so I could have just walked out. Uh, I was very much uh, enthralled. enthralled by it. It's very slow. It uh, it it stars uh, Ray Fiennes, Jessica Chastain, Matt Smith. Uh, quite a few people who you've seen. Jessica Chastain to us was the main draw. The main draw, yes. And uh, it's still sort of the main draw. Um, But um, it's a fascinating story. Uh, It has a lot of things in it I hate. Um, Rafe, uh, their their character, um, their characters uh, go to Morocco, uh, out in the sticks parts of it, to uh, go to a par- house party. By a and what very, you mean is out in the desert. Out in the desert. <laughs> very rich friend of theirs. And it's one of those oh, debauchy kind of... Drugs, st- and, drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol and, and sex. Yeah. And st- the, 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 nobody's likable except Matt Smith, who is the friend. And actually, he is a, he's pretty human. Um, and um, they're in an accident, uh Chastain and Fines on their way in, uh, something bad happens, and um, they try to sort of cover it over with the help of the police, uh, but no, can't be done because there's a price to be there's paid. There's a price to be paid, and uh, therein lies the tale, really. Uh, yeah. And and it's kind of the movie kind of at some point divides into two. Jessica Chastain stays uh, with at the party, at the party, and uh, Ralph Fiennes uh, goes out into the desert with an old man. Yes, um, and to to sort of do his penance. Right. So it's it's at that point it becomes two different stories, and I don't know. I just found it mostly unnecessary. Uh, well, <laughs> I I was intrigued by it. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I was, I was fascinated to see that he would go with this man. He obviously felt his culpability, and you didn't know what was going to happen from one second to the next. Uh, the whole part at the party to me was... Well, I, I would have rather been out in the desert and not <laughs> knowing whether I was going to live or die than be at that party, except for the pool and the food. And not even the food was uh, that uh, interesting, but uh, the pool was gorgeous. Uh, but they were horrible people. Yeah. And... Um, Rich, horrible people, or hanger on kind of horrible people. It's just, ugh. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I liked it very much. If you don't mind something slow but intriguing, I recommend The yeah, Forgiven. See, I found it very, very Yes, dull, everyone gives it and... one star. I give it three and a half to four. <laughs> so you decide. I don't know that I'd ever pay to see it, but, <laughs> but once I was there watching it, I... You'll you'll decide who you decide who it. who you think you're aligned in this uh, on this one, and let us know. I'm very curious. Yeah, well, it depends on how much curiosity you have about how people live and what customs are. I have are. a lot of curiosity. This mm-hmm. movie just didn't wasn't done in a way, and I have a lot of. I love Jessica Chastain. Yes, and she was wonderful. <laughs> yes, as always. And Ray Fiennes was wonderful as always. And, uh, but the movie Matt itself, Matt Smith was super. But uh, I, anyway, to me, its main drawback is that it was slow. Uh, to me, the main drawback was that it was slow and that I found about 40 minutes of it to be unnecessary. It was I would, long. I would have condensed it. I would have taken out the whole party thing that went after the fi- after he had gone to the desert, everything that happened with Jessica Chastain there by herself. And I would well, have, it did but play I mean, it wouldn't role. have It wouldn't have remained a movie. It would have been like a, a short. But, no, no but I, uh, I didn't. Because that story, that part of the story was interesting, but it needed to be condensed. And I didn't like the whole party scene after the, the after they arrive. Let's say. Well, anyway, I liked it being in sort of almost real time because okay. it was just a weekend, <laughs> and it did sort of feel like a weekend uh, watching it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of patience if I'm in, you do. if I like what I'm seeing. Yes, I don't. Yeah. Okay, The Forgiven is available in theaters right now. At some point, I'm sure it will land on your uh, on demand on or television. streaming service at some mm-hmm. point. Or your computer, if, you, <laughs> if, if that's you're how you young watch, and new, yeah. yes. 
Okay, finally, we uh, we finally got around to watching the new Downton Abbey movie. Uh, Downton well, we Abbey, were waiting for it a to new be free. era. Sorry, we were waiting for it to be free. Well, it wasn't free; it was on Peacock. But we have a but Peacock have subscription Peacock, so through to Xfinity, us. right? Mm-hmm. So Downton um, Abbey, a new era. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's you. That's okay. Um, written as always by Julian Fellows, directed by Simon Curtis. All the usual Suspects. gang, uh, in addition to Imelda Staunton and Dominic West, this season. Um, and um, the last time I guess they had a movie out was in 2019. This is a new era and a new pandemic. I uh, know the pandemic doesn't play uh, any role in this because it's back in the 20s. Um, and this time, the the main event is uh, a, a movie is being shot at, at Downton Abbey. Abbey. Now, I like the idea of it. It's very sweet. But honestly, the movie was almost redundant to me. It was, I, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. I, I like hanging out friends. with, yeah, it's like hanging out with all friends. But to me, it was as if we were just lying around chit-chatting and not really having any any story with an actual trajectory. Um, there was one big event that happened in the end that we will not tell you what happened. No. Um, that was uh, tug, tugged at our hearts, of course, as it was meant to. Um and I'm very pleased with, um, this is the first time I think in my life that I've enjoyed Dominic West. He was wonderful. He, he was, was and I liked his character and I'm very happy with what his en- character ended up meaning to mm-hmm. one of our favorite, one of our regular Regulars, characters. Yes, exactly. Um, and it's nice to see him playing a nice guy. As, yeah, for not a change. Not a slime ball. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it worked, it worked well for him. Uh, anyway, so again, I, I found that it was, uh, it needed to be tighter. It yes. Ne- the story it, needed to have more of a direction. But it was charming and fun, and the downstairs people got to have some fun. Uh, yeah, I just feel like, you know, when it was a show, they made every minute count. count. I felt this movie meandered it had a, a lot. had a lot of filler. Yes. Um, but it was a fun idea. Hugh Dancy is, in right, it, the by director. the way, he's the director. Uh, I do enjoy this idea that, you know, we're done, but we're not really done. Every few years we'll come and visit right. and we'll see where, you're, where you are and, and uh, what you've we'll been up to. And we'll let a movie be shot at Downton Abbey because, to tell you the truth, we could use the money. <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, to me, these years are now becoming more interesting. If they go into the 30s and the war and everything, I would love to continue following them around. Yes. Uh, have a movie every couple of years come out and show us what they've been up to. Uh, but I just need the story to be tighter. Not not just make a movie for the sake of the movie, but tighten it up and uh, make it count. Um, I enjoyed it. but it, it's I not, did. But it's but, not a great film. Yeah, yeah. And it was a great series. It was a great series. That's the thing, that we know what it's capable of you know we know we know we, we really know what it's capable of anyway though Downton Abbey a new era it's always fun to visit with our one of our favorite families in um, Britain period pieces um and especially with the exquisite costumes and the always. beautiful scenery and that fantastic house and uh yeah the lovely actors so this is what we have for you today. And, that's uh, it? That's it for now. <sighs> I know. We've also finally binged. I know it took us a long time, but we finally binged on the latest season of Mrs. Maisel. Oh, God. And it I'm was so, so happy we stuck with it. Because the first two episodes were like going back to that first pilot that was so terrible. With every Jewish cliche. stereotype <laughs> and cliche uh, known to man. Yeah. But, but, and but so, oh, that's why we, we watched the first two when it, when it came out and then we were like, mm-hmm. uh, and then I'm, we finally decided, you know what, let's just give it another chance. And how happy are we? From three on, it was riveting Excellent. and uh, fun and fascinating. And everybody was great Terrific. and interested. I'm still not crazy about uh, Abe, uh, yes, Tony Shalhoub's character. But he's wonderful. Yeah. And he had some sweet moments in this, actually. Mm-hmm. And I love it. It was brilliant. So if you haven't, check it out. Oh, yes. And don't be disillusioned by the first two episodes. It gets much better. Yes. And um, we just... And the hats get much more hilarious (laughs) with every episode. And we just watched, we just binged on another show that we can't tell you about just yet, but we will next time. Okay? Yes. All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, Be safe. Always be safe. And have a good summer, and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye.